Hey everybody, welcome back to Mining Modern. I'm Corbin Hostler and this is Jeskai Ascendancy. Uh, so this deck made a big splash when it came out uh, back in Khans of Tarkir. It actually top aided the uh, the standard Pro Tour uh, with uh, this this card here, this weird little combo. And the, the modern version looks a lot different than the standard version looked, but um, it was a deck that floated around on the fringes with Jataxian Probe and completely fell out after that. Um, but it's had it's one of these decks that's had a little bit of a rebound recently, uh, very small. Um, and the reason is because of a few things. Opt is a huge one for this deck. This deck is so good, Opt in here. Uh, but also Shadow of the Grave. This is a fun Amon Cat inclusion. So uh, you'll see why those matter here in a minute. I'll work through the deck. So the goal of the deck is to get Jeskai Ascendancy into play. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, your creatures get plus one until end of turn, you untap them. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you may draw a card and discard a card. So, you can think of a bunch of different ways, a bunch of different things you can do with this card, right? It has a bunch of potential, but one of the best things you can do is have a creature in play and cast a spell. So if you tap the creature to make mana for the spell, but then cast that spell, your creature untaps and you get to go through your deck for free. So, what that means is Silver and Carried and Birds of Paradise and Fate Stitcher, which I'll get to in a minute, all of these can produce mana uh, just by tapping and untapping. And with Jeskai Ascendancy and so many one mana spells, that means every time we do this, we're breaking even, right? Uh, we're, we're creating mana. Uh, well, at least breaking even on mana, but with two of them, you create mana. So uh, obviously, birds and Sylvan Carrion make sense, right? They're mana dorks. Fate Stitcher is kind of the weird one, but it works like this. For one mana, you can unearth it from your graveyard. And unearth means it returns the battlefield with haste, but can exile at the end of the turn. So Fate Stitcher's ability is to tap or untap another target permanent. So think about it. We can just be going through our deck. We can Fate Stitcher away a Fate Stitcher. They can kill our Fate Stitcher, whatever. Uh, but then we pay one mana to unearth it with a Just Sky Ascendancy in play. Now we can tap a land for mana, untap that land with Fate Stitcher, and then cast a spell, and Fate Stitcher will untap, and we can repeat. So essentially functions as, you know, Sylvan Karyatid, Birds of Paradise, uh, 9 through 12 in the deck. So we essentially have nine, uh, 12 mana dorks here. So the goal is to get them in play with Just Sky Ascendancy, and then we're going to cast a bunch of spells on our deck. We have Opt, Serum Vision, Sleight of Hand, Faithful Saluting, all at one mana to draw us through our deck. And Faithful Saluting is great because you can discard Fate Stitchers for later use with it. Uh, we have Ideas Unbound. You have to discard three cards at the end step, but we're not going to get to an end step. We're going to win then. Uh, so it's just two mana, draw three. Uh, mana Morphos, this makes sense, right? It's just kind of a free card. It cycles. It's pretty good. Uh, so this is one of the, the odd ones. View from above. It's this weird card from Conflux. Target creature gains flying until end of turn. If you control white permanent, return it to its owner's hand. So uh, what this is good for is when you have a bunch of mana, a bunch of creatures out, you can cast this. It'll return to your hand. You can go infinite with it. Um, that's the idea, right? Because your creatures are going to untap with just guy ascendancy. So if you can make two mana with your creatures, cast few from above, it'll go back to your hand. Your creatures will untap, and you can just do this as many times as you want to make your creatures arbitrarily large, thanks to just guy ascendancy, giving them plus one, plus one. Now, you might notice there's only three just guy ascendancy here, and you might notice we don't really have a way to win outside of making really big birds of paradise or fate stitcher and attacking our opponents. Um, but we have a plan for that. So for starters, all that looting we're doing with Just Guy Ascendancy, Shadow of the Grave is great. You can return all your uh, cards to your hand that you cycle or discard at this turn. So we discard a bunch, we'll bring them back. Uh, but then we move on to really what makes this deck work, and that is Glittering Wish. Uh, Green-white, you may get a multicolored card you own from outside the game, reveal it, and put it in your hand. Exile Glittering Wish. Great. So what we do is we put one Jeskai Ascendancy into our sideboard here. So now you have to keep in mind our sideboard is basically in play at all times thanks to Glittering Wish. So between the three Jeskai Ascendancies in the main deck and the four Glittering Wishes, we really have seven ways to get Jeskai Ascendancy out of our main deck, even though we, we only have access to four of them, of course. Uh, so that works out pretty well. Now, we, of course, we have a wish board because Glittering Wish we can get any time. So we have a lot here. We have Abrupt Decay when we need to kill something. Uh, you know, namely a, uh, uh, I don't know what the right answer is, but we need to kill something, right? Uh, treasured Find, this is basically just a regrowth that you can fetch with a Glittering Wish. Scar Scare Ritual, pretty weird one, right? But remember, the, the, the restriction on Glittering Wish is that it has to be multicolored. So what this essentially is, is a two-mana draw to with a, a downside that doesn't come into play very often. So it's um, it can work out when you need it to in a pinch. Uh, Fiery Justice, if you need to wipe the board, if you need to kill anything that keeps you from uh, casting multiple spells or whatever. Um, wear Tear, 
to destroy artifacts or enchantments as needed, namely the important one being Ley Line of Sanctity, which keeps you from targeting them, uh, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, failure to comply, a fun little split card here. Uh, you can return a spell to its owner's hand, so it's a little bit of counter spell protection, but also you can silence it. If you know your opponent's sitting on mana leak or cryptic command or whatever, um, you can, well, I guess it's it's more for RAS because it doesn't stop them because you don't necessarily go off at instant speed. You can do a lot at instant speed, but you can't win at instant speed. Um, but anyways, failure to comply just has a bunch of different uh, modes to it, right? That can be pretty interesting. We need to keep them from playing one of their combo pieces or a Wrath or something. Uh, then, of course, we have our only line of sanctities to stop from getting discarded. Uh, and we have some swan songs for the counterspell wars as well. But now here's the real kicker. Now, you can see how our deck can make a really big creature, but... What good's a 1,000, 1,000 Fate Stitcher if they're just going to block it? It's not like it has Trample or anything. Birds of Paradise, if they have a Fatal Push, you're not going to get there. Although they probably would have stopped you anyways with Fatal Push. But either way, if they have a Blocker, you're not going to kill them. And so Vakiri did as Defender. But you know what? None of that matters thanks to Flesh Blood, a split card, a Fuse card out of Dragon's Maze, uh, which has Flesh, which does some stuff, whatever. We don't care about it. We're never going to get it. What we are going to do is get Blood. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or player. So when we have our 100-100 Fate Stitcher, well, now we can go in our deck with thanks to this Glittering Wish, which we will eventually draw thanks to the Jeskai Ascendancy and all of our effects that draw through it, to get this blood. And then we're just going to have our Sylvian carry it to deal damage straight to their face. And of course, Leyline Sanctity becomes the problem here, but that's why we have uh, the Wear Tear in the sideboard which we can go get with the Glittering Wish to destroy, actually highlight the word tear here, uh, destroy the enchantment so we can still get it at their face. So that's the deck. That's the plan. Uh, I actually know a friend who won a PPTQ with this. Shout out to Daniel for that. Um, but this particular list, at least for the most part, comes courtesy of Anthony uh, Menino, who was a, a watcher of the series and said he's had a lot of success with it and sent it to me. So the only thing I did was uh, cut a couple of the... Um, one ofs or whatever and add ops because the original list didn't have opt in it so uh this is the deck i'm pretty excited for it i know not everyone loves combo and this is about as non-interactive as you get but you know what this definitely qualifies as not just being a fringe fun deck that we play in modern and trust me there's always going to be plenty of jank on mining modern but this is a legitimate deck that you can win at a tournament with if the meta is right you know this is the kind of thing where you play against eldrazi tron or something they just can't really interact with you in a fast enough manner to keep you from going off with this deck and that's what we're going for obviously it was much better with jutaxium probe because you'd have much more degenerate starts because probe costs two life instead of mana and was great with ascendancy but we get to play opt-in and now the deck is definitely uh, not on people's radar and a lot of people don't know how to play against this thing because it's been several years since it was even sort of on the edges of of modern or standard so that's the deck jeskai ascendancy thanks for watching let's give it a shot